Hey guys, wanted to do a knife video for you today. Uh, I received this in the mail today from China. Now, I've wanted, ever since I've been into knives, or ever since I discovered survival knives, um, I put quotes up there, survival knives, uh, I've, I've wanted an Essie, or EC, or however you uh, would pronounce that. Um, Randall, Randall's Adventure Training, uh, I wanted a rat. Then when uh, Ontario and SE did their thing, I d couldn't decide which I wanted to go with, the Ontario rat or the SE. Um, anyway, there's a long list of, uh, of rat-style knives that I'd like to have. I currently have a rat-assisted um, open folder, which is made by Ontario. And this is the, again knockoff Izula. Now, as you can see, they claim it's made in the USA, which it's not. They claim it is an orange Izula, which, as you can see, it is not. They give you this nice little survival card, which I believe Essie does as well. And this feels like a good quality little piece of kit. This card is, uh, I mean, it's not cardboard, it's like credit card material. But, uh, as you can see, U is spelt wrong on there. Uh, there were a few other spelling mistakes that I had found earlier. I noticed in the back here, if necessary, is all one word. Uh, and there's a bunch more. Um, if I took the time, I'm sure I could pick out more. It's come from China, and I'm pretty sure that the ones you actually get from SE don't have spelling mistakes on them. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't have one yet. I will, though. But anyway, there's the card. And it comes with a cheaply photocopied version of, I guess, the manual. Uh, this shows you the kit. You can buy this with the kit. Uh, so it shows you what would come with the kit or the Azula 2 that would come with the grips. Uh, just shows you all the different options that are, that you uh, would get for accessories. And how to attach it. How to attach it, how to carry it in different ways. Uh, this is really darkly photocopied. You can't make up the pictures at all uh, to see any detail into the pictures. I, again, am assuming this is not the way it comes um, when you actually buy a legitimate one. But, uh, again, and I know if you guys have watched my videos before, I do like to do a little research before spending $85 on a little slab of carbon steel uh, with some powder coat on it. Uh, now. I spent nine dollars on this knife and I tell you it was worth I mean okay let me quantify this a little bit qualify this a little bit I spent nine dollars on this knife including shipping from China so we've got a molded plastic sheath we've got a little slab of steel They've put something resembling powder coating on it, which I'll get into that in a moment. And they've quite nicely knocked off a design of a nice little knife. So, is it worth $9? Um, to be honest, I'll never understand how they ship half the stuff they do from China for the price they do. Uh, this was $9 Canadian, free shipping. Now, I guarantee if I tried to ship this to China tomorrow, it's going to cost me more than $9 shipping alone just to get it there. So I don't get how they do it. Uh, something to do with the exchange rate. Who knows? I'm sure somebody knows it much better than I do. But either way, is this worth $9 as a knife? Sure. Um, but it's sure not worth much more than that, if anything. Uh came with this little... Uh, obviously, just for shipping a uh, tip cover, which you can't even fit the tip of the blade in it. I, I tried. Uh, it actually came in the in the sheath, which is fine. So 
I've seen many reviews on this knife and as I started to say before if you guys have watched my videos before I like to uh, do some research first and I do consider getting one in my hands uh, a nice thing before I spend a good amount of money on something like this now it was nine dollars I said the same thing back when I showed you the dragonfly knockoff I felt it was worth the few dollars I spent on that to get it in my hands because it was small and it's hard to gauge that on somebody else's video um, so I ordered that I have it I know I want a dragonfly Fly spider go uh, will I ever carry the cheap knockoff because it was an extremely cheap knockoff no it's it's flimsy it doesn't work well it, it's junk but it was a good tool to decide whether I was going to buy the product or not. In the Spyderco's case, yes, definitely. In the Azula's case, I'm going to say yes, definitely. I've seen some good reviews on this. I've got some real complaints about this knockoff, which is fine because I didn't expect much for $10 or $9 over an $85 knife. So let's jump into that. The blade, or sorry, the uh, sheath. I see people using these um, on their review videos, and they snap it out of the out of the sheath, which this seemed to snap out just now, and then they snap it back in. But this doesn't snap; it just kind of you shove it in, and you feel it get a little tension there. It doesn't have a detent, or not a detent, but a a positive lock or a positive snap into the sheath like you would want for a neck knife or for a knife that you're going to horizontal carry or maybe carry upside down like this attached to a strap or something which you can do with the Azula definitely it's got many carry options it'll take the uh, tech lock it'll take you know you can use it as a neck knife you can use it uh, as an appendix carry or sorry a lower back carry um, really versatile uh, but I wouldn't trust now I say I wouldn't trust the sheath it sticks in there good for now but I can tell you as you look at this blade the powder coating is junk now, this is a high traction type coating it's uh, it actually has a nice grippy feel to it but look at that flaking and also right here where you can tell this is where the retention would be on that little plastic sheath and it's starting to chip there um, it's going to get loose and it's going to start falling out of that sheath when this coating goes and how quickly do I think the coating will go well guys I got this knife this afternoon <laughs> this afternoon and that's how it looks and uh, just to let you know what I've cut with it nothing I've not cut anything this came so dull out of the box it was ridiculous um, I just threw it on a quick field sharpener took a couple swipes through a, a Gerber field sharpener just uh, ceramic uh, sticks and the coating just flaked right off like like it was you know nothing it was just there for rust resistance during shipping or something now I've seen videos on the Azula the real thing and I know that this coating is resilient on the real one it sticks up, it stands up well uh, I've seen guys batoning with this which I mean you're not going to baton much with it uh, jamming it through wood um, doing some uh, some stabbing and, and bending at the tip and they don't even get this so I've seen these things put through some pretty good abuse and this is this coating is garbage uh, fact is now this knife is six and a quarter inch overall length blade length is 2.63 inches two ounces with the sheath supposed to be 1095 carbon steel now this here is it carbon steel? I I couldn't tell you, um, but I can tell you their website. I got it from AliExpress, straight from China. Said it was stainless steel, 
Um, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I also already reached out to them to mention how bad the coating was on it, seeing that I just took it out of the box today or the bag. And uh, we'll see. Uh, AliExpress is usually all right. Um, they may send me my money back because I did send them pictures. Um, or they might send me another knife. I really don't care for uh, for the sake of the $9. I'll be glad to take my money back on it just to save myself some, uh, obviously. But uh, I'm not going to be sending it back to them to have them replace it or anything foolish like that. Um, I, I just, uh, I considered it a worthwhile investment to see if I was going to save myself an extra you know, $74 or $76 uh, in addition to, to buying the real one. Uh, I was willing to spend $9 to to see if I would even like it. And I can tell you, I would. Um, I have never EDC'd a fixed blade, but that's a potential candidate right there. Um, carry that either, you know, side carry the small of your back um, or even just in your pocket with the with the case or as a neck knife I can potentially see myself uh, EDCing this if it was real not this one uh, I'm sorry but I don't trust the sheath it doesn't have a positive click when you put it in there it's not gonna happen I'm not gonna carry this knife uh, I'm not gonna depend on it and uh, I may clean off the rest of this uh, coating off the blade put a nice edge on it and just leave it in my truck for cutting cordage or something as a backup or I don't know I'm, I'm not gonna put much stock into it um, I may send this to somebody else if they want to know what the size of an, of a, an Azula is and they like me don't have any major knife uh, resellers around or retailers in their area and that's my issue now you guys might not have that problem if you're near Blade HQ or you're near some place that sells this kind of uh, stuff the real stuff, uh, you could walk right over and check it out, uh, get your hands on it, fondle it, and pick four other options while you're there to decide which one you like. I can't do that. Um, so for the sake of, I mean, in my in my truck, it would probably cost me $30 worth of gas to get to the nearest knife shop. So when I consider $9, including shipping, to pick one up and try it and it's it's not the end of the world to spend that little bit of money. So, um, I was looking today on Warriors and Wonders, a site where I buy a lot of my knives, and they have a flat dark earth. It's not flat dark earth. They have another one. They have a version of this anyway that I'd like to have. Um, I think I will. After having my hands on this one, as much as I know I'm not giving this knockoff a positive review, um, sheaths junk, spelling mistakes on the uh, credit card, uh, or the survival card, um, poor quality on the photocopying of the manual, coating on the blade is junk, color on the blade is not right. Uh, this is supposed to be like a bright lime green, and I don't know how the color is going to come across in the screen, but uh, it's dull. It's, it, I mean, it's still a cool color. I don't. I might even prefer this if the coating was proper and, and would stay on. Uh, but the one I ordered, and if you look at it on their website, it's supposed to be a bright green. And actually, just a second, I can show you a comparison here. Just have it up on the screen. I don't know how well this is going to come across. But, yeah, you're looking at lime green compared to, and this is showing brighter than it should. This thing is quite dull. And as I look through the viewfinder here, it looks like it's brighter than it is. But, anyway, not right. Not right at all. There you go, that guy. Sit back here. There we are. Um, so, yeah, long story short. If you actually want a functional knife that you can depend on, uh, like you should be able to on any of these Randall's Adventure Training knives, don't buy a knockoff. Seriously, for $10 or 
if you're trying to make this a usable, dependable carry knife or backup knife or whatever you want to call it, this is not the knife for you. Um, people on a budget, I'm on a budget. I, I truly am. And this, um, I wouldn't settle for this uh, as far as something I'm actually going to carry with me. Um, I ordered it hoping it would be okay. I knew it wouldn't be nearly as good as the full-blown real deal um, because it's a knockoff. I don't expect them to be perfect by any means, but I expect them to be usable. I wanted to hear a nice positive click when I put it into the case, and I didn't expect to see this happening on the edge and on the tip. The first time I ever touched the thing, it just disintegrated. Um, let me just, just to show you for an example how this coating is. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Junk. That is, I mean, it's supposed to be textured powder coating. Oh, I guess it's likely powder coating, but I don't know if they didn't uh, have it charged the proper way as far as the uh, positive and negative charge, whatever they have to do for the powder coating to adhere, and then they bake it on. Maybe they didn't bake it at a proper temperature. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've got some experience with powder coat just from steel working I've done in the past. Uh, as far as purchasing things that I've had powder coated, and... It, it shouldn't be flaking off like this. So it's it's poor quality. I would assume it's probably poor quality steel, although maybe it is 1095. I, I don't know. I don't have a way to test that myself. Um, so I can't really vouch for it, but I can tell you even, one thing I didn't cover, this jimping. Um, the one thing that I think these guys got right is that jimping. They did an amazing job on it. I don't know how well you can see it there. Maybe not at all. But yeah, this, this jimping is really nice. Um, but the funny thing is, my finger alone, or my thumb alone, has already started peeling that powder coat off the jimping. It just, it, it's no good. The finish on it is no good. Um, the little Zula... Um, ant as you can see is missing its head and has been since I got it the text is uh, foggy at best it's not uh, nice and crisp like the real ones you can see how uh, yeah it's just they tried pretty good knockoff if you're not touching it if I was to sit that on a shelf and put all the accessories with it or not accessories, but the, the case, the, the card, if I was to put that all with it and tell you that's uh, that's an Essie Azula, um, just as it came out of the bag, you probably would believe me, but uh, first time you try to put it through any piece of wood or or carve anything, you're, you're going to know differently. Uh, very dull, very bad finish on the, on the coating, and uh, yeah, very bad review, honestly. Um, did it do its job for me? Yes. Do I want one? Yes. So in the future, you'll probably see an Azula. Um, I will bring it across the leather chest and uh, give you guys a good honest review on it uh, after I put some use into it. But this one, uh, you'll only see as reference from here on. There's no, uh, you won't see me batoning or carving or anything with this. I just don't see the need to go out and, and try to prove that it's a good knife when, uh, to me, I've already proven it's not. So, Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Any comments, questions, feel free to hit me up down below, as always, and uh, have a great day.